Now we're going to be modeling the waves that we use as sine waves. So there's actually a really good reason for doing this. It turns out that you can form any shaped wave you want by adding together sine waves with different frequencies. So, and we'll be learning about superposition and things later. So let's now have a look at this FET simulation. You'll be able to link to it below this video if you want to have a play around with it so that we can look at this wave traveling along a modeled piece of string. So here we've got a simulation of a wave traveling along a piece of string. This is very similar to the pulse, the transverse pulse that we sent along the slinky coil before, except that it's more idealized because it's a simulation. So if you look at the little green points, you can see that the particles making up the medium are moving upwards and downwards, while the pulse is moving along to the right. Now, as a point of interest, I've set it to no end at the moment. This is so that we don't need to deal with reflections. We will be looking at reflections later, but that's a level of complexity that we don't want to have to deal with right now. So what we're going to try and do is write down an equation to describe this wave. Before we do that, we need to carefully define everything that we're going to be using in that equation. Some definitions that you need to know. The wavelength of the wave is the distance between adjacent crests or adjacent troughs, or we could say that it's the shortest distance between two points on the wave that are in phase with each other. Now there's two ways we can represent waves. In this graph we have a y-axis and an x-axis. So this is showing how it would look to us if we took a snapshot in time and how the height varies with the distance along the wave. The amplitude is equal to the distance between the equilibrium position of the particles and the crest. So the distance between the crest and the trough of the wave is two times the amplitude. Another way to represent waves is a height versus time graph. This graph shows us what's happening if we consider just one point making up the wave and as time passes, so the point travels up and then it travels down again. So the period of the wave is the time between two crests or between two troughs, or we can say it's the shortest time interval between two points on the waves that are perfectly in phase with each other. The frequency is always the inverse of the period. So what we're going to do now is derive an equation to describe the wave. So let's think about what we would expect for this wave equation. Well, first of all, we'd expect the same relationship as we derived previously for vt and x. So that if it's traveling to the right, then x becomes x minus vt. Now, we'd also expect the wave to repeat itself after one wavelength. Now, we said that the general form for a wave was a sine function. So we're going to be taking this sine of some function of x minus vt. So this function, the f of x minus vt, is going to give some answer in radians. So we would expect that if x progressed by one wavelength, so in time that would be one period, then it's going to be an additional 2 pi on. So we would expect it to have the relationship f of x minus vt is equal to minus 2 pi plus f of x plus lambda minus vt. And so a simple general function that solves this equation is if we let f of x minus vt be 2 pi on lambda times x minus vt plus 5. So you can just substitute this into that equation on the last slide to prove that. And so remember this f is in radians and so it's going to go into our sine function. So what we're doing now is just putting this into our sine function. So we would expect to have the amplitude outside of the sine fa function because that is the maximum displacement we can be from equilibrium. And so our wave equation is going to have the form y of x and t is equal to the amplitude times sine of 2 pi on lambda 
x minus vt plus phi. So the phi is just there to make this very general so that we can match any starting conditions. Now some things to note. If the wave is travelling to the left, so in the negative x direction, we need to replace x minus vt with x plus vt. So this would be the equation for a wave travelling to the left. Now each period the wave travels one wavelength. So the velocity of the wave is equal to the distance over time. Distance is one wavelength, time is t. So we can write this as f lambda. So this equation is a very, 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 very important equation. V is equal to f lambda. The velocity of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Okay, so this is almost the same as the form we had last time. Last time we had 2 pi on lambda vt here. V over lambda is equal to the frequency. So we've just replaced our V over lambda with the frequency here to get it into this form, plus phi. Now to get this into the normal form, which is what you have on your formula sheet, we let k equal to pi on lambda and call this the wave number. Now this can be a bit confusing because this k has absolutely nothing to do with that spring constant. It's a completely different constant. It's called the wave number and it's equal to 2 pi over lambda. Now omega is equal to 2 pi f and is the angular frequency, which is exactly the same meaning as it had in simple harmonic motion. So this omega has the same meaning as before. So we can write in a simplified form the wave equation for a travelling wave is y of x and t is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. This is for a transverse wave as the height is changing. So some problems to practice. Homework set 5 for 1121 question 12 for 1131 question 16 and set 6 for 1121 questions 1, 2 and 4 and for 1131 questions 1, 2, 4 and 5. Okay, so in this oscillations topic, we've moved from looking at simple harmonic motion to looking at waves. What's the relationship? Well, the relationship is that if we have any point which is oscillating with simple harmonic motion, then it can generate a sinusoidal wave of the form that we've just derived here. And not only that, but if we consider any point in the medium as a wave with this wave equation passes, that point undergoes simple harmonic motion. Okay, so what I want you to do now is prove this. Prove that if we consider one point P here, then it is moving with simple harmonic motion.